So, uh, in, in from an amplification standpoint, from a broadcast standpoint, what social media channels do you use to promote your show? Yeah, this this one's interesting. So, the show's been on the air about ten months, eleven months, and most of that time, I didn't put a ton of effort into proactive promotion. Right? Okay. I leveraged sort of my own audience, my existing audiences, the audiences of the people that I interviewed. So, organically speaking. You know, just tweeting it, sharing it on LinkedIn, emailing it to a few people. There hasn't been a ton of proactive promotion, but now we're shifting gears a little bit. Where in 2017, that like a lot of it was, I just wanted to get good at interviewing and at running a show to feel like I had a good, solid portfolio of shows that I actually believed in promoting. Yep. Like if you had asked me to like promote my show at episode 10. And I'm sure maybe you can relate, right? Think back to your first couple of episodes. <laughs> You're over 200 now, so you've got right. me way beat. But you know, I'm at 55 or something. Uh, I didn't want like I didn't want to share my show very heavily because I knew we were just getting started and right. practicing and learning and like trying to make the show better. But now, like I want everybody to hear the last couple of interviews I did with Saul Orwell with Ross Hudgens because right. like I. Think if you listen to a lot of the SEO content out there, a lot of the you know even reading wise, like I think it's some strong stuff that they brought to the table that we were able to engage in in conversation. So now I'm not that shy at all about sharing it, but yep. I definitely was not aggressive in sharing the first batch of episodes. No, I, I can appreciate that. Neither will we. <laughs> <laughs> and remember fact, back in the days when you had all the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, to, to, I didn't quite answer your question. Sorry to interrupt you there. Being, this be, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Being on other podcasts yep. is one of, is like basically my number one strategy for 2017 because I had the chance to attend a workshop that Roman Mars gave. Roman Mars hosts 99% Invisible. They've got the Radiotopia podcast, huge podcasting space. I had the chance to ask him what gave 99% Invisible the biggest exposure. Right. And it was when they were on Radio Lab. Uh, when they were featured on Radio like overnight, they were like, they were a huge success by being on Radio Lab. So, like, the number one thing that I've heard and know anecdotally and I'm starting to experience a little is being on other podcasts. Yep. Is a great way, obviously, to get people interested in your podcast. So basically, he's using us. Yeah. Well, the, it, <laughs> it, it, I, I always like that too. I always tell people the same thing. You know, the the I think there's this uh, competitiveness that's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like that, people are going to gravitate towards the people that they're attracted to, no matter what, right? Right. And so I love that podcasters are often on each other's shows because. It, it's you introduce one, you're introducing knowledge to your audience that you weren't before. Mm -hmm. So they're getting mm -hmm. exposure to new ideas and everything else. So you're increasing the value to your audience. And then two is someone in your audience may actually like that show more than yours and, and go listen to that one. What? Too. Go listen to that what? one too, or <laughs> in replacement of like, that's, that's not a bad thing. That's a, that's you're a actually thing. doing a service to your consumers. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's value and it's authentic. You know, yeah. it's not saying we, we want you all to keep here and stay here huddled, you know, mm -hmm. no, forget mm -hmm. that.